Oh, hi, lovely people. We, I am here once again, and we are all about to study English language. And um, when you see me like this, you know that we have a lot in common, and we do so much here. Now, we have English language, and what we are going to do today is all about drama, the dilemma of a ghost. And you know that my name is Jacqueline Kunedua Samoa, but you can call me Auntie Jackie. So you know that, I mean, we do set our objectives each time we have, I mean, anything we, we study here. So we are going to set our objectives and we make sure that we are going to go by the objectives. Okay, so our objectives for the day we have by the end of the lesson, the learner will be able to explain what drama is. Again, the learner will be able to give a summary of the play, the di dilemma of a ghost. Then you talk briefly on some elements of drama in connection to the dilemma of a ghost. And then we are going to answer a few questions on the play or on the story. And then as you know, on our social media handles, you do call me. So you can call me on 0302-211-698 or 0302-211-698. Two one one six nine nine, and then our social media handles: we have Facebook, Joy Learning TV; we have Instagram, Joy underscore Learning TV; the Twitter, and then YouTube, we have Joy Learning TV. Okay, so we move on to our RPK, relevant previous knowledge. What do you know already? Learners have ideas on the dilemma of a ghost. I want to believe that you read. I mean, this book in school, in the cockerel, that is the common book we all know, right? And then learners do read storybooks or plays on their own during their leisure times. Of course, you don't just loiter about, you read during your leisure times, right? So we move on to the main topic for the day. What is drama? What is drama? Drama, also called a play, has its own unique features. So drama presents stories to be performed by an audience. Now, the origin of drama go back thousands of years to a time when literature was oral, spoken aloud than written. Okay, uh, it means that gone are the days when literature was just about just saying it, just like we had by the fireside. You remember some years ago, we had Mami Dokno seated with the kids around her. That was just about literature, okay? It was orally spoken. But now, it is not like that. We have it written just as we have the dilemma of a ghost. Now, every community included a storyteller who entertained and inspired the group with exciting tales. Like I said, Mami Dokono and a few other people, they sit down and talk about Anansi stories, you remember? Now, as years went by, the storyteller was joined by other people who acted out different roles in the story. Things changed, all right? So gradually, these actors took over and the single voice of the story broke into many voices. Drama keeps alive its oral beginnings. We still enjoy dramatic performances just as people did thousands of years. However, today we can also read plays and screenplays just like we have in the cockerel, the dilemma of a ghost. Now let's go and uh, let's go to the summary of the play, the dilemma of a ghost. I give you a brief summary. So the dilemma of a ghost in 1964, I think I was not even born tells the story of a Ghanaian man, Ato Yosin, whose family has cribbed and saved to send him to university in the U.S., that is the United States. He returns with an African-American wife, Yuleili Yosin, and neither wife nor family is happy. Now, Ato and Yuleili met at university in the United States and got married. Yuleili, an African-American woman, then moves back to Ghana with Ato, the play focuses mainly on the cultural differences and the struggles that Yuleli faces in fitting into Ato's family in particular and the Ghanaian society at large. Ato's family displays the pre prejudice of thinking African-American are inferior as they are descendants of slaves. Now, Yuleli consider, considers a man of Ato's family customs backward and is disdainful or better so disliked many of them now the interplay between the two groups shows both the prejudices that exist between 
African and African Americans, as well as the difficulties in bridging the gap between the two groups. In the prelude, that is the introduction, the narrator calls the audience to action and asks that the reader must take part in the play. Now, to explain the prelude, the reader senses the bed of the waist side as a listener, an observer, or a poet. The bed of the waist side is aware of the past, the present, and the future. So he is ever-present, knowledgeable. He is the informer. Possibly he is represented by all seeing eye. Now, as the acts begin, the audience immediately recognizes the cultural disconnect between the protagonist, that is Atto, and his wife, Yuleli. Yuleli makes ignorant statements about African women and culture. Similarly, Atto's female relatives make ignorant statements about African Americans. The cultural miscommunication and misrepresentation is highlighted, and Atto is the mediator and the educator. Now, basically, he is the bridge between the two different experiences, but he fails at his task. Right, so that is the story. You know, Atto traveled to the US um, and met Yuleli, and they just got married. Now they came back, and the whole lot of problems just uh, uh, came up in the family house of Atto. All right, so as we go on, we are going to learn more and then study the elements and what goes into most of the elements. And then we can move on to our question. So we move on to some elements of drama. Now, the first one we have certain that is, the play is set in diverse locations in modern Ghana, cosmopolitan, and remote. The characteristics of the setting are on surroundings that is, time and place where the story occurred. The old building on the right represents the old customs. On the left, the protagonist is enclosed by new customs. Now, the enclosure is the center of the building, represents the struggle within Atto. All right, so when we say certain, yes, the certain has to do with where the incidents happened, okay? So now we have the right, uh, the right building representing the old custom, and then we have the left one representing the new custom. And then in the middle, we have uh, 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 the center of the middle represents the struggle. That is what Atu is going through when it comes to his family and the wife. Now, we move on to the theme. It is something about that is stated or implied in the story. It is usually illustrated by the characters and the plot. Now, sometimes the title of the story or play provides a clue to the theme. So the theme must not be confused with the moral of the story because the theme does not pass judgment. All right, so the theme in the dilemma of a ghost is made up of one, the clash culture. So this is evident in the relation between Atto and Yuleli. That is the first clash in the question of marriage. What happened? In the African sense, marriage must be contracted by the relatives of the partners involved. While in Europe, um, um, the couple can contract it themselves, okay? This is Africa. We don't do that, all right? But Atu just went to the U.S., got married to Yuleli. Any which how they did it, I don't even know. But you don't do that in Africa, especially Ghana, okay? Um, the relatives of the partners must come together before we contract a marriage. Now, we, the second one, we have childbearing. We realize that Atu and Yuleli were of the view that a couple, that is a Western culture, can decide when to give birth to children. While Atu's parents believed that it's only God who can determine that. All right, so in the story, we realize that Yuleli and Atu decided to give birth as and when they want. But that is not in Africa. Childbearing in Africa is very important and it means so much to us, our families. Okay? So that is another theme. Then the third one, we have family ties. In the Western culture, the family is just the wife, husband, and children. But in the African sense, the family involves all members of the extended family of both the man and the woman. I know you know what extended family I mean, entails, and then the nuclear family, okay? So extended family has to do with our aunties, our uncles, grandmothers and so on and so forth while the nuclear family has to do with just the mother the father and the children 
that is not done in Africa. All right, but in the Western world, it is done. Now, the fourth theme we have childlessness. That is among many Africans, it is almost a curse not to be able to produce children. But in the Western sense, there is no cause for alarm at all. In the Western culture, they don't care whether you have you marry and you don't have children or you have, they don't care. The number of children you have, they don't really mind. But Africans we mind. Okay. So you can imagine somebody from the Western world coming down to this um, our continent, Africa. A lot of problems she would face okay now we continue uh, we have the attitude and then the etiquette with a western way of life a person can romanticize and at any place a person can romanticize at any place and the time regardless of who is around okay but in africa african society or culture there is no room for romance in public it's an abomination especially before elders now, I told before his elder, elder said, you don't know how sweet Eulalie is. You dare not say this in the presence of elders in Africa. All right. But because Atu went to the Western world, he kind of, you know, copied a lot of things from them. Okay. So you cannot stand in the presence or I mean, in the midst of people and, and start playing romance. No, not in Africa, but it is done in the Western world. So you can see that Eulalie and Atu had issues because they didn't see anything wrong with that. Meanwhile, it was very bad to do it in Africa. And then the sixth one, we have habits. So whereas drinking, smoking, rejection of gifts is part of the Western way of life, it is an abomination in the African context. So you can realize, you realize that you lately, I mean, was drinking, had liquor, was smoking, and even rejected some gifts from the in-laws. You can't do that in Africa. Okay, but you really, I mean, thought it was normal because of, you know, where she was coming from. Okay. Now, I go on to the next element that is a conflict. So the dilemma of a ghost addresses an important issue of cultural miscommunication, misrepresentation and conflict. That is the African versus the African-American. All right. The African versus the American, African-American. Okay, so it deals with social conflict between the old and the new, the town and village, marital conflict, and the clash of cultures or cultural conflict. Now, in the story, a young man from Ghana, Atuyosin, who was educated in the United States, runs, returns home and brings with him seeds of conflict. What are the seeds? You find out this conflict is compounded by his wife, that is Eulalie Yorson, ignorance and immaturity. Now, in the end, Atos' mother, Esikom, helps to save the family. That is what mothers do. Mothers are always there to save us, no matter the situation. Okay, now we move on to the, uh, the other element that is language. So, there are a lot of transliteration and proverbs, language or speech in the play portrays the social class the age and background of the characters now therefore six levels of languages are heard in the play one let's take atuyosin so atuyosin uses english and his speech or language identifies him as an educated african husband with an african american woman okay that atuyosin uses English as his, uh, I mean, it identifies him as somebody who is educated, okay? Now, second one, we have Yuleli Yolson. She also uses American English, and her speech or language identifies her as an African-American woman who returns to Africa with her new African husband. Still on the language, we have the prelude. That is the bed of the wayside. It's made up of stylized poetry and prose language. Okay. Then we have the boy and the girl. That is the dream, I think. They use childlike talk or language. Childlike talk or language. The fifth one, we have the first woman and the second woman. They use chit chat language. That is what we call kokonsa, you know, kind of. So chit chat language. And then finally, we have Atuyosin's family. That is Esikom, Nana. Achre, Petu, Mansa, Akroma, 
Monka, they use different forms of languages. Okay, so they are, they, they, we break them into six. That is Atuyosin's own, Yuleli's own, I mean the prelude, the boy, the girl, the first and the second woman, and then Atuyosin's family. They use different, different languages. Now, um, we have the characters and their roles. I, I, I know that you know what characters are. The characters are the people who are concerned with happenings in the play or in the drama. Now, the characters may change or grow or learn something. The reader is primarily interested in what the characters do or say. Okay? So, in the, the characters in the play, uh, we have Atu Yosin, we have Yuleli Yosin, Atu's family, that is Esikom, Nana, Achre, and so on. Now, the boy and the girl and the bird of the wayside are all characters. Okay? They are all characters. Now, let's take them. I mean, I took a few of the characters. We'll talk about them. So, we have Nana. Nana. No. So, the first point is Nana as a concerned grandmother. So, you remember Nana was um, Atul's grandmother. Okay? So, Nana as, act, act as a concerned grandmother who is eager to see her great grandchildren before dying. All right. Um, the second point is she plays the role of an uncompromising old woman who is well versed in the tradition of her people and means to uphold it at all costs. You know, tradition. Our grandmothers and our grandfathers do not deal or do not joke with traditions. So Nana, I mean, the name should even tell you that she's an old person. To tell you that, yes, she's well versed in the tradition of our people. Okay? So I'm very sure that she was trying to um, educate Yuleli on some few things. Now, the third one is she also supported the idea of women always being clean. Okay? Gone are the days, you know. Um, a woman, you're supposed to be very, very clean in all you do. Okay? Your appearance, the way you walk, the way you talk, your household, how you take care of your home. All right? That was her role. She, she was always checking them as to, you know, always trying or making them realize that they are women and that they need to be clean always. Now, I also picked Monka. Is a Monka? Yes, Monka. Now, she acts as a disgruntled sister who sacrifices her education at her expense of her brother to pursue studies overseas. This thing is it's, it's, it's mostly done. Okay, they keep telling us that, yes, you are the woman. You will definitely marry. You, yours is in the kitchen and all that. Okay, so she eventually or finally had to sacrifice and then um, allow the brother to move on. That is, that is the reason why Atu was able to go to the United States to uh, further her, uh, her, her studies or his education. Okay, now her speeches, which are full of sarcasm, represent one who is frustrated at every act of her brother due to the better recognition attached to his new status. As she says, after all, what is he learning? Okay, is it, is it the knowledge of the leopard skin? The way some people become scholars are fearful. I always say that one can always know the man who is civilized. So in a way, she was casting insinuations, kind of, okay? Because I think she got fed up, she got annoyed with the fear, uh, fact that um, uh, the brother went overseas and brought somebody, you know, called Yuleli or something, okay? She was not too happy, honestly, because of all the sacrifices she had to make just to see her brother, you know, move on and then coming back to help the family. Now, her deride and saucy speeches are not limited to her brother alone, but also the wife whose name she even makes fun of. Hooray, hooray. Okay, you know how we do it. When you want to make fun of somebody, you just say something silly. The name is not hooray, it's Yuleili. Okay, it's Yuleili. But see what she did here, hooray. She was just, I mean, causing trouble. Okay. Oh, let us say that some of the names are not coming into the world. Uh, some of the names coming into the world are fearful. That was her statement, okay? So in short, she didn't even know how to mention the name and she was making fun of Yuleli's name, calling her Hureri, okay? Now, she acts as a support to her mother and grandmother as the defenders of the culture of the Fanti, of course. Of course. Um, she supported the mother and the grandmother when they were all against Yuleli, which, which was 
a normal thing for me. It's a normal thing. Now we have Asicom. Finally, I think the last of the characters. We have Asicom. So through her speeches, we gain an insight into the world of a mother-in-law who is bent on protecting her son's marriage. No matter what, mothers are always there for us. Yes, they, 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 they are going to cause problems. They are going to find out issues and try to um, solve problems. But at the end of it all, they mean no harm. Okay? They always want the best for us. So you realize that um, Esikom, the mother-in-law of Yuleli, at the end of it all, was bent on protecting her son's marriage after all. Now, she is a representative of the mother who fights tooth and nail to see it that their daughter-in-law complies with the norms of the clan. Yuleli didn't want to, you know, adhere to some of the um, uh, 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 issues in the house, okay? She, she just was on her own, but Esikom, the mother-in-law, tried to make the daughter-in-law comply with, I mean, the norms of the clan. Now, she plays an important role in the effort of performing, um, to perform the traditional rites of cleansing with the aim of making you lately bring forth children. Okay, that believe, you know, they believe that um, if a, a, a woman cannot give birth, then there's a problem. So they try to kind of cleanse you, you know, they say washing your stomach and all that. Okay, so Isikom, you know, as a traditionalist, tried to do some for Yuleli. Now, she also plays the role of a proud mother who basks in the glory of her son's successful studies overseas and therefore arranges a home marriage for him. But Ato rejected the offer. She therefore becomes disappointed. Okay? Um, our mothers, our great-grandmothers used to do that. You know, um, initially, marriage can easily be, you know, we bring two, they bring two people together. Okay, this one will be good for you. This one will be good for you. And by the time you realize you guys are married. Okay, but I mean, that is in the olden days, not now. Okay, so Ato's mother, I think, yes, was trying to contract, you know, some home marriage thing for Ato. But I think he didn't buy the idea because he was coming with his own wife, Yuleli. Okay, so that made... Um, Esikom very, very disappointed and kind of sad, okay? Okay, so we have gone through the story, we've gone through the elements and, you know, we've spoken about the conflict, you know, the characters and all that. So I want us to go through these questions and this is where I need you most. So number one, we have, who was the ghost and what was his dilemma? We have all read the dilemma of a ghost, we know the story in and out. Okay, so who was the ghost and what was his dilemma? Number two, explain how Atos' mother, that is Esikom, felt about her son returning home with an African-American wife. How did the mother feel? That is Esikom, how did she feel? Now, number three, where did Yuleli come from? Where did Yuleli come from? Number four, who was Achre in the play? Who was Achre in the play? Number five, which of the two village women in the play was barren? Which of them was barren? And then number six, what better theme can we deduce from the dilemma of a ghost? I spoke about a number of themes, okay? So you can tell me any of them you remember. Then I gave you some exercises with this. You are going to choose just one and you write on for me. And then you can send the answer to Joy Learning TV on Facebook, Joy Learning TV on Twitter, Joy Learning TV on YouTube, or on Instagram, we have Joy underscore Learning TV. And these are your questions, the personal questions, okay? So one, narrate Atos' dream in your own words. Hello, Cola. Hello. Hi. Madam. Hello. Good evening. How are you? I'm being very well by the grace of God. Thank God. What do you have for me? Well, I want to answer question one. Question one. Who was the ghost and what was his dilemma, right? Yes, madam. Great. Tell me the answer, please. The ghost was Atto. Okay. And the dilemma was after he had left, after he had left, you lay and he left. Okay. So he went to inform 
his mother. Okay. In the night, but then uh, his mother and the younger uh, uh, mother were asleep. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. I think you're on the right path. I clap for you. Thank you so much. Okay. So it was okay. Ato who was the ghost. Okay. And he was in a dilemma because he caused problems or he caused a problem. But then he didn't know who to turn to. Okay. So Ato was really in a dilemma. Thank you very much, my dear. Thank you so much. Okay. Right. So we move on. Wow. From Sogakope, Delhi. Madam. Hey, hi, Benny. I'm fine, please. Good. How are you? I'm fine. You are calling from Sogakofe? Yes, please. Wow. Great, great. Tell me, what's the name of your school? Sogakofe JKSB. Okay. And which form are you? I'm in Form K, please. Very good. So you are just about to write BEC, right? Yes, please. Great. Now, which of my questions would you want to answer? Question three. Question three. Where did you... You really chose the, the very, very simplest one. Okay. Right. Don't worry. Just give me the answer, okay? So where did Yuleli come from? America. America, of course. Would you want to answer any other one? You are in Form 3, remember? Yes, please. Question 2. Question 2, okay. Explain how Atos' mother, Esikom, felt about her son returning home with an African-American wife. Tell me about it. She felt disappointed. She felt disappointed. Why? Can you explain further? Because she arranged uh, another lady for him to come and marry when he's back. Great. That is a home marriage, right? Is yes. there any other reason why she felt disappointed? Apart from the fact that um, because she, she planned or she contracted some marriage for, for him in home or at home, is there any other reason why she felt disappointed? Yes, because uh, Ilale's uh, culture did not correspond with their culture. Exactly. Clap for yourself. You are right there, okay? And okay. you are going to make it in BC, all right? Amen. Very good. Good luck. Good luck, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So I'm still waiting for your calls. I'm so happy with the answers coming. It means you are making headway, okay? So, hello, Rita. Hello. Yes, Rita. Please, good evening. Good evening, please. How are you? I'm fine. Great. Talk to me. Talk to me. What do you want to tell me? Or would you, want, you want to give me an answer to any of the questions, right? Please, yes. Which form are you? Let me ask. Please, form two. Form two. So you have a year more to write, right? Yes. Yes, but you are trying and I'm happy you called, okay? Okay. Right. So which of the questions would you want to answer? Please, question six. Question six. So what better theme can we deduce from the dilemma of a ghost? Right. I'm, I'm listening. Marriage is not just a private affair between two people. Okay. But it's a public affair between all the family. Very good. Of the person that gets married to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, that was... And question four too. Question four. Okay. Who was Achra in the play? Oh, I think I lost Rita.